suffering and science, they go hand in hand. Because when we're suffering, then we're looking for solutions to this problem. I think of the bubonic plague. It's happened many times over the years. It's what we call a pandemic or a worldwide epidemic of a disease. We had COVID in the 2020s, but back then we had several episodes of Black Death, bubonic plague, same thing. 40 million people died uh, in one episode, which you know, there weren't that many people in the world. Uh, the, the mask of the vulture, okay, death was everywhere. And we still have plague out there. You can see the distribution and it pops up here in the West, North America. Yersinia pestis is the bacteria. It's a rod-shaped organism that causes the plague. So it's in the bloodstream, transmitted by fleas when they bite. Now, the flea can't just get to us that easily, so it uses a rat as a vehicle or vector. And that's what was happening. Okay, rats were invading the homes of people back in the past, and fleas were hitchhiking and jumping off and biting. One of the symptoms of plague was um, swollen lymph nodes, okay, because our body filters the blood at various lymphatic uh, sites, and and these would turn purple. They're called buboes. And when you start getting purplish buboes, then the end was near. Oh, even worse than the flea bites was coughing because we got pneumonic plague. It was going from lung to lung with no filtering by the lymph nodes. Highly uh, mortality, high mortality, very dangerous. I like this painting because this shows the recovery. Humans are durable. Okay, we are built to survive. All right. Many of us have immune systems that destroy nearly everything that invades us. Back then, we didn't know about the masks like we did during COVID. And as I mentioned, this disease continues to kill. All right, suffering in science. The vaccines, we were tired of being sick, right? We wanted some help in the form of vaccines, but they didn't exist back in the past. Variola it causes smallpox, which here's a mild example, but the real form of, of smallpox, I didn't want to show you because it's really graphic and depressing. There's no cure for smallpox, even today, but we have vaccines that can prevent it. We do today. You can see it's still out there in the world. You can see some recent events where uh, smallpox is broken out. Well, in the past, one scientist noticed that milkmaids, people who milk cows, they weren't always women, but they called them milkmaids in, in the study. Uh, they developed cowpox. So you can see this kind of graphic cowpox here. And it looks terrible, but nothing compared to smallpox. So if you got cowpox, you were immune to uh, smallpox. All right, so that was kind of a mystery. One scientist, his name was uh, Edward Jenner, back in the 1796. Okay, so you can see that vaccines are not recent, right? They've been around for a couple hundred years. Uh, people still worry about vaccines, and they don't uh, understand the history. Okay, Jenner, he took the fluids from cowpox victims. You see this woman's got a band-aid over her arm. This one's got a band-aid. Okay, so take the... Uh, fluids from those lesions and inject them in children. <laughs> Seems kind of crazy nowadays. And these children developed immunity to smallpox. Great work, Jenner. Germ theory disease. Okay, we're, we're talking 1860s around when finally scientists disproved the common belief that disease was caused by mysterious forces, you know, vapors, gods. You can see this old painting here people were whipping themselves they were they didn't understand what was causing disease well the germ theory changed all that because now he realized that disease was spread from other infections okay louis pasteur was one of the uh, frontier scientists that developed pasteurization he found that if you heat flashed something you could kill most but not everything 
Sterilization killed everything. You might think, well, let's just kill it all. But food tastes better and it's more nutritious if it's just heat flashed. Well, what he did was really cool. Uh, he took uh, chickens that had died of cholera and he heat flashed or pasteurized. That's how the pasteurization got the name from Louis Pasteur. He pasteurized this and he injected it into other chickens. And I tried to draw this little story. It helps when I draw. Um, and then, okay, so the, the, this chicken did not die because it got the pasteurized virus. And you think, well, okay, yeah, he, heat, he heated it. Maybe he destroyed it. But the cool part was then he injected that same chicken with deadly cholera. And that should have killed the chicken for sure. But it didn't because the heat flashed or pasteurized cholera gave it immunity. All right. So we had the first really documented example of vaccines. All right. From this, he, he figured out, okay, if you alter the form of an organism, it can give some protection. And vaccine, the word vaccine comes from vaca. Vaca means cow. And you might guess it originated from the cowpox. Um, it was the early one of the earliest uh, works with vaccines and Jenner cowpox. Okay, cholera has not gone away. It's all over the world, wherever drinking water is contaminated by human feces. Okay, even though we know about it, it's hard to control. It swims. The bacterium actually can swim in water. Robert Cook in the uh, mid 1800s this is like a competition between these scientists. He worked with anthrax caused by Bacillus anthracis. Uh, it was killing humans and livestock all over the world. And one of the symptoms of it was uh, internal blood loss or hemorrhaging. In fact, anthrox means blackened because when blood is exposed to um, the air, it, it turns black after a while. You can see these lesions on the arm. Uh, we didn't know the etiology or the cause of this disease. Uh, we just burn. We'd burn whoever died of, of anthrax, just, and we knew that worked. Well, his uh, experiment was really simple, but I liked it because uh, before he did this work, we thought maybe it was one organism causing lots of diseases. Yeah, rabies, anthrax, smallpox, all caused by one evil bacteria. So he took a mouse that had died, and he looked at the blood, and he saw these rod-shaped bacteria. We know these are called bacillus. And then he took these bacilli bacteria and injected them in healthy mice. They died of anthrax. And there he saw the same rod-shaped factors. I tried to draw this little story. Um, and so we came with the one organism, one disease. Okay. So each type of disease is caused by one specific type of microbe. It wasn't, a, it wasn't one evil microbe causing lots of diseases. You know, Bacillus anthracis is still around. We have uh, agreements all over the world that we won't use it as a bioterrorism weapon, but some people are still secretly doing it. It's a good weapon, or I should say a bad weapon, because you can breathe it in, you can touch it and get it, or you can swallow it. And it's, it's highly fatal. Hand washing. Uh, you might think, well, of course. But back in the 1800s, I was Semmelweis. He noticed that if physicians would just wash their hands, because prior to this, a physician would go from patient to patient and wouldn't wash up, and they'd have sometimes guts on their clothes, and the hospital smelled like thing flesh. It was terrible. And so he found out it, by looking at uh, maternity patients, if if doctors would just wash their hands, it would reduce the infection rates. And we do this today, for sure. Antiseptics, those are topical around the skin. Hospitals were dangerous places, okay? If you got a, had an operation, you had a high likelihood of dying, even if the operation was successful because of infection. Now, Joseph Lister 
notice, especially with compound bone fractures, where the bone was sticking through the skin, they would get uh, infectious gangrene and be amputated. Okay, lots of arms and legs were lost to the saw. But Lister, I, people thought he was nuts. He was spraying them with this carbolic acid mix. And it didn't really work at first, you know, because for some reason the aerosol didn't work. But then he started with a plaster. And he's famous today for Listerine. Antibiotics. Okay, these are oral or injected, and they've been around for thousands of years. We find uh, tetracycline antibiotics in the Egyptian mummies. So these are substances that retard the growth of bacteria. Fleming found this out when he was working with uh, Staphylococcus. He goes, whoa, the bacteria can't grow near this mold. And from this, we got penicillin from the mold penicillium. And that changed the course of history, especially with the world wars coming after this. Microbiology, kind of a general term. But we can reduce starvation with nitrobacter because it's kind of, uh, you can see the difference between crops. Uh, nitrobacter, it fixes nitrogen, recycles proteins, and it works in many poor countries. It's not that expensive. Uh, e. coli in the colon, all right, vitamin K and cholesterol reduction. I sometimes worry about these, uh, colon cleansers people go on because we need <laughs> we need those guys in our gut okay we don't want to wash them out um, they're, they're good guys right nothing's rotting in there okay lactobacillus in the vagina reduces yeast infections all right finally uh, I'm still on that science and suffering connection and we got to molecular biology and this is when we're working with DNA and chromosomes and I'm going to give you an example or a contrast. In the past, we had this amazing vaccine for polio, which caused uh, physical uh, disabilities. Uh, and I don't want to show you these, but um, it was a serious disease. And the Salk vaccine, named after Jonas Salk, it used dead viruses. So you think back to the early work, okay, if you alter an organism, then it can help give protection but this is kind of risky because what if one of those viruses does not get killed and that did happen okay some uh, people were injected with live polio but now with okay now I'm with the current day molecular biology we don't use whole viruses anymore right? a lot of people are afraid of uh, vaccines because they think back to 70 years ago to these old viruses and vaccines. But now we have the recombinant DNA. All we do is we take a small part of the viral chromosome to kind of trick our body into recognizing the virus, stimulate immunity. Okay, I think of the COVID-19 vaccine, Moderna. Okay, here's Kizzy. And she or she is overseeing the injection of Reverend Jesse Jackson, one of our early presidential candidates. All right, so the new vaccines are fabulous and safe. I mean, there are still reactions, you know. Not, it's not a perfect world we live in, but they're pretty darn good. All right, thanks for listening.